Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today I have a weekly planner and a daily planner from She Plans to give you full review on and walk through each one. This week is her launch of her mid-year planners and this daily and this weekly will be launching this week. So if you're trying to make decisions, maybe this can help you. So we're going to get into these and I wanted to show another favorite from She Plans is her quarterly planners. I have a full review video on that also and I just wanted to mention them because they've become a favorite of mine as I'm sure these will as, I, as the months start and I get to play around in them. But the quarterlies are sold out right now but will be remade for 2019 and be launching in September I believe. But I just wanted to mention that I have fallen in love with that from her also. These planners haven't started yet, so I haven't gotten to play in them yet, but I will, and I will definitely be reporting to you on Instagram once the months start in these in July. Yeah, they start in July, and I will definitely be giving Instagram updates as I use them. So let's get into the daily first, but I want to show you that in both her planners, she has cover options, and she gives you an option of a hard cover. It's a very good hard back cover with O-rings or a soft cover that is really durable, like kind of like a placemat feel. Like even this page is really durable, but then there's an extra really thick um, clear topper to even protect it even more. So it's very durable, but it just makes it more lightweight because it's a soft cover. And it's your spiral bound rings for those that may not want O-rings and may not want the hardcover. So they might want a little bit lighter book to them and a little bit more portable because it's lighter. And if you're someone who likes that, then um, you have options in both of them. So this is the daily, which is six months worth of daily. And this is the weekly, which is an entire year of weeks. You can just see that it's true that when you pick a hardcover and an O-ring, it adds a little bit of bulk to your book. It just does. So those are your choices. I love that she gives you choices in both of them. That's a really nice option because there are people that prefer one over the other. Okay, let's get into the daily first. This cover, I love it because I love navy blue. If you've heard me before, like my favorite color combos are navy blue and gold, and this cover has it. I just think it's really cute and it's beautiful. Um, her O-rings have been functioning really perfectly, as well as I've opened, closed, opened, closed, and played it around with this. So that is a really good thing to be able to report. All right, and she has the really nice gold covers to protect the corners, and they just look beautiful too, going along with your 2018 there. And the gold. Okay, this is your 2018 daily agenda. This is the July through December. She makes these in six month options, like I said, and I think that is perfect because most daily planners that come, especially with a hardback and O rings, if you get the entire year together and if it has quality paper, it is a quite hefty book to haul around. So this six month option makes it so much more portable. And so you have a page in here for every day. Let's get into the daily. And her motto or mantra is to create the space to let life happen. And this is she plans once again. And then um, there's a little bit from Ashley, the owner and creator of she plans right there. And a little bit more from her right here. She is very active on Instagram, so if you're interested in her company, I would recommend following She Plans on Instagram. She loves to take surveys on Instagram of different covers and of different layouts and what her customers really want. She really wants to make um, what her customers want. And so she's really great about connecting on Instagram that way, and I love that. All right, so she has a dreams and plans for the year ahead. Always start with the end in mind. And she talks about defining your ideal day and week, your, the highlight reel for 2018, big goals for the year ahead from vision to action. And you have room here to create, create a bucket list of goals for this next year 
that will allow you to move closer to living your ideal day and making that highlight reel a reality. So what you're wanting to happen here are thinking of some goals, brainstorming them um, in this area about how to make that happen. My focus goals for the year ahead. It's time to focus and make things happen. I like how she gives you explanations and walks you through this. She doesn't just lay out this page and leave you blindly to go through it. I really always like that guidance from the maker or creator of a planner. I mean, creator. So since this is a July through December daily, it starts you in quarter three, July, August, September. And this is revisit, refresh, renew. Are there any goals that if achieved will make other goals easier to reach? Focus goal one, focus goal two, focus goal three, and asking why, why this goal, why now? So to really think, you know, why am I picking this goal and why right now? Is this the best time for it? And then if it is, the action steps down here below. There's four little boxes you may not be able to see there outlined really lightly in a light dot grid right there. And I just really love the fresh look of all of her pages. It's a calming feel. That's a good name for it. It is a calming feel. And I don't always feel like I'm a calm person. Ashley, the creator of this, seems like a very calm person on Instagram. And so that's probably why she achieved this calming feel in her book because that really seems like her personality. And I love that because it instantly makes me feel calm when I sit down to plan. And I think that's what we all need. Okay, so for quarter four, because this planner is for quarter three and quarter four, you have October, November, December, and you also have three room for three focus goals. Dreams and plans for the future. What does the future hold? Your dreams and plans don't stop with the end of this planner. Use this space to keep them safe until you are able to transfer them to your next planner. And I love that because as the year's going along, you know we all think of things that we want to put down for our next quarters. And when you get to the end of the year, it's hard if you don't have a place to be able to jot that down before you have your next planner. Okay, you get your six months at a glance, the six months that are in this planner. So this is July through December of 2018, and you have those six months at a glance here and anything you need to write down for those months. You have all your holidays and observations right here for 2018, 2019, and 2020. So this is the year we're in, but then she gives you two years ahead, and I really like that. And then she goes ahead and gives you January of 2019, February of 2019, March of 2019, April of 2019, May of 2019, June of 2019. Okay, so she is giving you a head right here for future planning. I don't have this in any other daily planner. So she is giving you six months into 2019 of your full monthly view, monthly layout. So you can schedule appointments and work ahead right here in the front of your planner. I absolutely love that. It doesn't take up much room and that's going to add so much function as you get to, you know, October in the year and you need to start planning things for 2019. You have the first six months of 2019 right here laid out. I also want to mention that Ashley has 70 pound paper in here. It feels amazing to me. It feels like 80 pound paper to me if you were to ask me to guess. So I'm going to find a page to do a little pen test for you guys, but I already know because I use her quarterly planner how well it works. Okay, I just used a few pens that I happen to have in here with me. And they were two pilot pens and a paper made ink joy. And you can see how nicely the paper takes that ink. Like I can barely see that I've written anything there and definitely no bleed through. Her paper feels really, really nice to write on also. I love the, the tooth of her paper. Okay, so let's go back here and look at what our daily looks like. Every month it has your same kind of... Um, a gold khaki colored tab and just really simply the month written there. Then for every single month on the back of your tabbed page, it says revisit your vision, refresh your goals, renew your commitment, or just doodle, take notes, jot things down. So this page is used for whatever you want for that month. My focus goals for July, 
and it's to think about those focus goals for July, three of them. Then you have your monthly layout, which we've already talked about. There's a quote at the top of every month. And then her numbers are written a little bit different. That doesn't bother me at all. With instead of just a five, she writes a zero five, a zero six. And it has a typical Sunday start monthly layout in your calendar. You have a monthly list. You have the next month's view right there. All right, then we go into our daily pages. Let's look at a full day first, and then we will look how Saturday and Sunday are split. So your full daily page is a daily list, a notes. You have a header right here, which I really like because if it's somebody's birthday, if something big is happening that day, something you want to remember or note, you have a, a good size header space up there to write it in. I also like this box right here because you can adopt it for anything you want. It could be the weather for the day. It could be what you did for your workout that day. It could be your gratitude for the day. It could be your dinner for the day. There's so many things you could use that little box for and I just like how it's there and it's not labeled. Her times are written really lightly and you have a line in between for your half hour and it's from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now I love that they're written lightly because you guys know me and my daily planners. I don't have a lot of days where I have a lot of timed appointments or events and so I like to use that time section for extra notes or extra lists, whatever I need it for, unless I have appointments that day. So I really enjoy that the times are written very lightly, and that means it's easy for me to kind of not be dictated by them. If it's a day I don't have appointments, I can use it for anything I want. I love how the daily list is gives you a bigger portion to write your list on. It's not a little skinny box. I like how it's just lined and it's given to you to use however you want. The biggest bulk of my day is my daily list and I love how there's just a blank note section which could be used for a sticky note for the day for me. It could be used to note my workout. It could be your dinner plans in your workout or it could be a whole nother list for me. I really am excited to use this daily planner. I'm definitely going to use it myself and um, have fun playing around in it and I will be reporting on Instagram once this planner starts in July. So your date has the day of the week, week written up here with your date written right there. And that's it on the day. I actually love how she does not have a quote or anything up here. Like I already stated, I love the blank header. I love how there's less on the page, just less. And so it is a completely blank, white, beautiful page for me to make whatever I need to daily. Now your weekend is divided into Saturday and Sunday you have to share a page. So I will see how I feel about this after using it because sometimes my weekends are super busy just as busy as my weekdays. But a lot of times I grab an extra tablet and use that on the weekend so I may not even have to use these weekend pages. But on the weekend she simply has an AM and PM written really lightly and then your daily list. And the same with Sunday. AM and PM written really lightly in your daily list. And then she has a big header here and a big header here. And you can use those headers for writing anything big you need to. It could be used for writing a, a gratitude at the end of the week or a favorite memory from the week. Really for whatever you want. Um, so I, I do like how that is there. So that is your daily page. And it is just that same page repeated all throughout. Every day gets a full page. When there is a holiday, it's noted right up here in the right-hand side, but not too big, so it doesn't take up your whole header. There's Independence Day for July 4th. So I do like that. And all your holidays are noted on your monthly view also, which I don't think I pointed out to you guys. So let's look at that Independence Day. It's noted just at the bottom of the day. And it is in the same ink color and font as the rest of the page. So each month has that exact same look. You end your month and you have a notes page. And it says like July 2018. So you know that was the end of that month. And then you have your same um, notes or goals revisiting or doodling page for the new month. You have your focus goals for August. Then you have your August monthly view. And then you have your daily pages for August. 
And the exact same thing, August ends, you have another notes page and we're starting September. So you have your same pages all the way through December. And when December ends, you get to go through New Year's Day. She gives you January 1, which I really like that. And then you just have your one notes page that would end that. And then that's the end of this daily. You have a white um, cardstock pocket on both sides. Pocket on both sides at the end. And then that's the end of this daily planner. So let's look at the weekly now. Okay, so like I said, you have the choice of hard or soft cover. This is a soft cover. And this is your weekly. This one is called your weekly standard. Okay, that's the one that does not have appointment times in it. Then you have your weekly appointment, which is the exact same layout, but has the times put in it. Okay, so this is your um, academic year. So it runs from July of 2018 to June through June of 2019. A weekly agenda to create the space to let life happen. Okay, and the same information from Ashley is put in there. And the same dreams and plans for the year ahead is put in here as that is in your daily. And then you have your same focus goals for the year ahead, just like we went over in the daily. And this is also starting in quarter three, since it's an academic year planner. But this is a 12 month because it's a weekly. And so you have your focus goals for quarter three, one, two, and three. Then you have your focus goals for quarter four. And then you have your focus goals for quarter one, January, February, March. And your focus goals for quarter two. Then you have dreams and plans for the future, for future planning, before you get your next planner to make those notes. Then you have your year at a glance, just like in the daily, except you get your full 12 month in here because this is a 12 month planner from July through June, like I said. So this can be used to note your appointments in if you wanted to. It can be used to note birthdays and anniversaries. It can be used like I use mine to note big expenses that only come two to four times a year. I put those on here in the months so I can see like what months have a lot of those big expenses that aren't paid every month in them. Holidays and observances, you get the same thing as in the daily for 2018, 2019, and 2020. I love having this in here. It's something I do refer to in my planners, so I don't have to go Google something. Looking ahead, she gives you a whole outlook for 2019 and 2020. Since this is an academic year, um, this goes for the next academic year to 2019 to 2020. Then you have two lined note pages. Okay, actually, this is where all her note pages are in her weekly planner. So you have a good chunk of lined note pages right here. You can see that. So probably at least 12 or more um, front and back of her really nice thick paper. So you have all your notes pages right there up front before your planner starts. And then we start into July, and it's the same format as the daily. So this is your doodle page or revisit your visions and goals. This is your focus goals for July, one, two, and three. Then you have your monthly layout, which looks exactly the same as in her daily and in her quarterly even. Um, you have your quote up there. You have your sneak peek at your month ahead. And then you have your monthly list right there. And I always like to show this how, and I don't always remember, how do different planners do it? when you have, um, when you would need a six week drawn in your calendar, which no planners generally have. Um, so right here, she divides it not diagonally, but divides your box in half. So you do have a little half square there. I always like to show that so people know how that's done. All right, so then let's look at our weekly view. And let's just kind of go to the middle of the planner because I feel like um, with the rings, we just get a better look at it if we go to the middle. Okay, so your week is laid out where you have a header up here. I kind of really like that because I, oh, I always can find something to put up there for the week. You could put a quote of the week. You could put something you're focusing on for the week. You could put a focus goal for the week. Um, there's, there's just so many different things you could do with that space. I like how... Her days are so free of anything. If you order the appointment, then you will have the appointment times on here. 
So you can look that up on your site if you want to know what that looks like. But other than that, it's the same layout. So this one is without the appointment times. And I love that she sent this one to me because this is the one I would pick. Since I'm not someone who lives by my appointment times, this is definitely the one I would pick. I like how there's a blank space under the date every day because I would definitely utilize that for my weather. I'm pretty sure that's where I would put my weather, but I'd have to play around with it. And so I like this big space at the bottom because I can see a lot of people using that for dinner or a workout, or if you wanna track your steps, or there's just, there's a lot you could use that box for at the bottom. And then the rest of this can be used if you wanna write in appointment times, if you want to write in a to-do list, you guys, if you follow me, know how I would use it. I would probably leave the first like six lines for any appointments or um, non-negotiable to-dos or errands we have to do for the day. And I would leave that top portion for that. And then I would only write my to-dos underneath that. So if the top was blank, then it would tell me I didn't have any appointments or errands I had to be at that day. Saturday and Sunday are drawn a little bit different. And I did... Um, see her talking about thinking about the design of this for 2019 um, might be changed a little bit uh, to where Saturday and Sunday are blocked like that so it still goes across um, but this one is not like that I I understand why she did this because the biggest thing about her company that is different from so much that's on the market like I said with her daily is having that big room for the list and this is her big weekly list. This is what makes it different than all the other weeklies on the market. There is just not any other one just like this. I love how there's a huge weekly list space because that is what I work off of. And that's why I'm using her quarterly planner right now as an appendage to my planning because I can have my weekly list open on my desk to work off of the whole week. And this is just really simple for me to see. And once this planner starts, I am definitely going to play around with planning in this because I need a space every week for my weekly list. Her quarterly does have a bigger weekly list space, but this is a really good space for someone if you want a vertical week and you still want a big space for a weekly list. So I love that she's done this because I work off of a weekly list and then assign it to you know a day and write it down in my daily. But I can't just go assign all these weekly tasks to a day because I don't know how each day is gonna flow and which days I'm gonna be able to fit in what things, but I do know these are the things that have to get done that week. So I really love this layout that she has done. I love how clean it is, how she's not dictating what you should write where, like there's not a gratitude box. There's not, um, you know, a weather box. There's not all those boxes drawn that dictate to you and tell you where to put something. I really like that those aren't on here because it leaves it so clean looking that the page is calming. Like I said before, it is a really calming feel and it feels like you can sit down and feel calm about your week and you can dictate where everything goes and make your week how you need it to be because everyone's life is so different. And even with each different season of our life, our life is so different. Okay, so in between each month, at the end of the month, it's the same as the daily. You have a uh, page that's labeled like December 8, 2018. December just ended. You have a notes page for that. Then you have your next month starting. And then you have your revisit your vision, refresh your goals, renew your commitment, or just doodle, take notes, and jot things down. Your focus goals for January and she takes you through how to do this, like I said. She's not leaving you blindly to fill these out and know what steps to take, but it is a really simple system. It is not complicated like some um, goal planners that are really extensive and seem overly complicated to me. It's a really simple si uh, system to me. And even if I just wanted to take one focus goal for January, that's totally an option and that's right here. This does not mean I have to have three focus goals for every month. It just gives you the option to be able to have three. If you want to only work on one, and then that is, that's right there. That's your prerogative. And I already pointed this out in the daily, but here is what your holidays look like. Just noted really nicely on there, but not taking up too much space in the day. 
right there. And so you have your typical Sunday start for your monthly in her planner. And then you have your typical Monday start for your weekly. And that's what we are most used to. In America, that's how um, the bulk of the weekly planners are done. And so this is her your entire year, weekly planner in an academic year, July through June. And so when you get to the end of June, you have a notes page at the end of June, just like normal. And then you have your two pocket folder, just like in the daily. And then that is the end of your planner. So all your notes pages, like I pointed out, she did give you a whole bunch of line note pages are right here before your first month starts. So, and I like that. I think I would actually like them in the front. I Most notes pages are in the back of planners, but I kind of like this being different. And it'll be interesting to see how, um, once I start to use it, how I feel about those note pages being there. But I love that she gives you a good amount of note pages. Because that's one of my biggest gripes with Inkwell Press, with Erin Condren. There is not a lot of note pages in their planner. There's not enough, in my opinion. And she gives you a lot of note pages. Plus, you're in between months. You have this note page. And at the end of every month, you have this note page also. So you're having two note pages um, per month in there. And then a good bulk of note pages at the front. Okay, guys, you can always tell when I'm excited about a new planner or a new company. And I really love so much about She Plans. And like I said, right now I'm actually using the quarterly. And so I'm updating you guys. I've been showing it on Instagram. And I will do that with these once these months start in July this year of 2018. And July will be here before we know it. So this week is her launch of her academic planners at She Plans, and I believe her uh, pre-orders will happen in September for her calendar year planners, if you're interested in that. Um, for her quarterlies or monthlies that are sold out, those will be pre-ordered in September, and she will have all new covers then. And so check out She Plans if you haven't. I'm really excited to be able to use her planners and show her planners to you guys. All right, thanks for watching you guys. Happy planning and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.